Hi, fourth graders. Today, we're going to read the second story in our theme of the week. And this story is about Louis Braille. This is a nonfiction story about Louis Braille, who is a young man whose solution to an important problem nearly 200 years ago continues to help blind people today. So let's take a look at our vocabulary words for our story. So on the right side or the left side of your screen, you have the vocabulary words. We have institute, pattern, discourage, simplified, successful, and pinpricks. And we're going to match those up with the definitions on the right. So we're going to say institute is a kind of school. Patterns are recognizable arrangements of designs. Discouraged means made, oops, discouraged means made less hopeful or confident. Simplified made less complicated, successful, having success, and pinpricks, bumps or holes made with a pin. And those are all going to fit into our story today. And then you're going to have a vocab worksheet to do with those as well. So this story starts on page 512H of your hardcover reading book, Louis Braille, the boy who invented books for the blind. Today, blind people all over the world owe their thanks to Louis Braille. At the age of three, he lost his vision in a tragic accident. In the 1800s, when Louis was growing up in France, blind people did not have the same opportunities as others. Being unable to read or write posed huge problems. At a special school for the blind, Louis, now in his early teens, longs to read and write, to live a more normal life. A man named Captain Barbier has created a reading system for the blind called night writing, but it is too complicated. Louis decides to change the situation. He creates his own reading system for sightless people by using a made up alphabet of raised dots that blind people can read by touch. Find out how young Louis overcomes the odds and achieves what everyone else thinks is impossible. Louis tried not to waste a single minute. Even when he was home on vacation, he worked on his dots. Often his mother would pack him a lunch of bread and cheese and fruit, and he would wander out to sit on some shiny, sunny, some sunny hillside. Other times he sat by the side of the road, bent over his paper and board. There's Louis making his pinpricks, the neighbor said with a smile as they passed. What was he doing? Was it some kind of game the blind boy was playing to keep himself busy? Louis didn't try to explain. He just went on punching patterns of dots. At home in Couvray, Louis had plenty of free time to work on his experiments. At school, it was not so nearly so easy. There were so many other things to do. Louis had to go to class. He had to spend an hour or two in one of the workshops every day. He had to practice his music and do his homework. He had to eat meals with the rest of the boys or someone would come looking for him. But Louis still found time to work on his ideas. He worked in bits and pieces. He worked before breakfast and between classes. He worked after dinner and late at night. That was the best time of all. The boys were all asleep and everything was quiet. Hour after hour, Louis bent over his board, experimenting with different patterns of dots. Sometimes he got so tired he fell asleep sitting up. Sometimes he became so excited he forgot what time it was and worked until he heard the milk wagons rattling by under his window. Louis would raise his head with surprise then, for he knew it was early morning. He had worked the whole night through again. Then Louis would crawl into bed to nap for an hour or two before he had to get up yawning for breakfast and his first class. Louis's friends became more and more worried about him. You never sleep. Half the time you forget to eat. And for what? A third boy snapped. A wild goose chase. That's what. Maybe you're right, Louis always answered softly, and he kept on working. Three years went by. Three years of hard work and trying not to quit succeeding. Sometimes Louis got so tired he could hardly lift his hand, and sometimes he became very, very discouraged. Again and again, Louis had simplified Captain Barbier's patterns of dots, but they were still not simple enough. No, reading with dots was still hard to do. Were the boys right? Was this a wild goose chase? Men had been working on this problem for hundreds of years. Smart men, important older men. And one after another, they had failed. Who did he think he was? What right did he have to think he could do better than they? Then Louis had a new and very different idea. It seemed so simple after he'd had it. Captain Barbier's night writing had been based on sounds, but there were so many sounds in the French language. Sometimes it took almost a hundred dots to write out a simple word. This was far, far too many to feel easily with the fingertips. But what if he used dots in a different way? What if the patterns of dots didn't stand for sounds at all? What if they stood for the letters of the alphabet instead? There were only 26 of them after all. 
Louis was filled with excitement. He was sure he was right. Now he worked even harder and everything began to fall into place. First, Louis took a pencil and marked six dots on a heavy piece of paper. He called this six dot pattern a cell and it looked like this. He numbered each dot in the cell. Then he took his stylus and raised dot number one. That would stand for A. He raised dots number two, one and two, and that would stand for B. Raised dots number one and four would be C. Louis made letter after letter, and when he was finished, Louis Braille's alphabet of dots looked like this. Louis ran his fingers over his alphabet. It was so simple, so simple. 15-year-old Louis Braille felt like shouting or crying or laughing out loud. All the letters of the alphabet had been made out of the same six dots used over and over again in different patterns. He knew it wouldn't look like much of anything to people who could see, but it wasn't supposed to. It was meant to be felt quickly, easily, and it worked. Louis was home in Couvray when he finished his alphabet. He could hardly wait to get back to school and show it to the other boys. What would they say? Would they like it? They just had to. Louis wasn't disappointed. The boys loved his alphabet from the first touch. It's so simple, so easy to feel, and so small. So much fits right under my fingertips. We can write. We can write letters to each other and keep diaries. We can take notes in class and read them better, back later. And books, Louis said quietly, don't forget about books. Soon we will have all sorts just for us to read. News of the alphabet spread quickly through the school. Soon the director of the institute sent for Louis. Tell me, Dr. Pignier said, what is this, this alphabet of dots I've been hearing so much about? Please, sir, answered Louis eagerly. If you will read something aloud, I'll show you. So Dr. Pignier picked up a book and began to read slowly. You can go faster, sir, said Louis. Soon Louis's hand was flying across the paper, punching words onto dots. When the director stopped reading, Louis turned the paper over. He brushed his fingers lightly over the lines of raised dots, then quickly, easily, without a single mistake, he read back every word. Amazing, Dr. Pignier kept murmuring. Amazing, how old you are, are you, my boy? Fifteen, Louis answered. Fifteen, to think that men have been searching for just an alphabet for hundreds of years, and one of my boys has found it instead. Fifteen, amazing. Louis glowed with pride. Now was the time to ask the most important question of all. Sir, when can we start making books? So I hope you enjoyed the story about how the Braille alphabet was invented and Louis Braille, our last problem solver in this theme.